Hey guys, what's up? I'm uh, putting this transmission back together. Um, I was kind of trying to decide if I was going to do anything with the really the reassembly process of it. And um, I noticed there was a couple of things that it would probably be useful if I showed you since I'm here doing it. Um, if you watch the video about the disassembly, you remember that when I pulled the main shaft out, first gear stayed in the case, okay? Now, you can try to put the main shaft back in with the first gear laying in the case, but it is a fight because the splines on the main shaft fit very, very closely to the internal splines on the first gear gear. Um, so it's it's really a fight to like hold it right and get it aligned and, and turn it and get it slid in there and you're moving the gear and trying to hold the shaft up and it's just a real pain so if you're patient you can take the gear out of the case slide it onto the main shaft not all the way up like it is here but down towards the end of the splines that first gear runs on and turn it and put it in the the back portion of the case right here you've got about an inch and a half wide gap on this side of the casting and about a two and a quarter inch gap over here where you can kind of lay the gear in and turn the whole main shaft sideways with the gear on it and then drop it in um, it takes a little bit of finesse but it is doable that's how I did it um, usually you know just changing the synchro hub you don't have to pull the shaft out of the case at all so that's not an issue if that's what you're doing but if you're you know changing one of the other gears on the main shaft or changing the main shaft itself say your second gear welded itself to the shaft and, or you broke a tooth off another gear or you need to change the first gear gear because you broke some teeth off then that's important um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the orientation of the 4-5 synchro hub okay this will only go in one way and uh, let me show you why if you look at, it looks the same when you're looking at it this way, but if you compare the size of everything, both the gear and the synchro bore on this side and on this side, you'll see that this side is a lot larger. Uh, fourth gear is, of course, larger than fifth, um, so you can't put it in backwards. It won't go together. Uh, you can only put it on one way, and that's that's a good thing. So, um, I don't think anybody else has ever managed to do that. Now, you'll remember I was talking about with the Waterloo Overdrive kit that uh, in the instructions that suggested that you use a piece of wire to help lift the counter shaft when you're sliding the main shaft in as well. Um, I didn't have to do that the first time, and I don't think I'll need it this time, but I stuck it in there just in case. Cause once you've got everything together, you can't get it in there. Um, what I'm going to do is, you see, I'll, well, I don't know if it's in the frame. I can't remember. But uh, I've got that old uh, messed up trailer rim there. And uh, what you do is you get everything where it goes, and then you just pick the back of the case up. The input shaft goes in the hub bore of the rim, and should everything should just fall into place now I'll see if I can make that happen Let me see if it's in frame yeah okay that trailer rim is just barely in frame you can kind of see that I'll have to have to make a modification for the rest of it uh, so what I'm gonna do here is put this as close as I can Now, you can't, it would go in, okay, uh, the main shaft would slide right in right now, but the counter shaft is not in its front support bearing. So if I slide this in, the counter shaft won't go in. Um, they've got to go together, and you may not be able to see it, but I had to remove the support bearing for the rear of the counter shaft to get the counter shaft to drop away. It's, that's just, just how it has to be done. I don't know if I can explain that any better, but um, so let me see if I can. I want to put the nose 
of the main shaft right there where it's just about to go in its bearings and uh, I set the counter shaft the same damn it I set the counter shaft the same way a little bit ago so mm, this takes a lot of finesse in case you didn't know um, all right. see if I can make this happen It's probably going to go all the shit as soon as I try it, but we're going to try. Holy fuck, that's a lot heavier than I remember it being. So, I didn't hear them slide and fall in like they did when I originally did this, but when you've got the case, let's see, you're in for me. okay, when you've got the case standing up like this, gravity helps you instead of fighting you to get the shafts where they're supposed to go. You know, people have asked me, well, why do you have that old trailer rim sitting beside the shop? It's no good. Well, it isn't any good for a trailer rim, but it's a great tool. So, you see what I'm saying? Now you're not, you're not fighting to pick the counter shaft up at the same time you're picking the main shaft up to slide them in. All you've got to do is get them in the right spot and they fall in. Um, if you ever go into a transmission shop, this is the same way they build automatic transmissions. Um, to stack the clutch packs and everything in the case. Uh, they use gravity to help them. Actually, the, the main shaft, it did go in and the counter shaft did not. So, That was very easy, and uh, back together now. So that's how you put the main shaft and counter shaft back in with the Waterloo Specialties Overdrive Kit. Now I've mentioned before, and it's unfortunate, but the Waterloo Specialties Overdrive Kit is no longer available from Waterloo Specialties. They discontinued it. Um, I mean, Tom's a great guy. Uh, he supports his products, but uh, from what he said, I guess the overdrive kits just weren't profitable for him uh, at the amount he was able to sell. So he discontinued them. Now there, are, there still are some out there floating around, probably 10 or 15 of them in private hands that people would resell. Of course, they're not going to be $1,350 like they used to be. They're probably going to be quite a bit more than that, but that is what makes the Spicer transmission actually worth using. Um, with the, the factory 0.89 overdrive ratio that they have, it, they just, they suck ass. So, uh, but the 0.69 makes it a lot, a lot better. Um, I actually did go and order one more 1308 SL to support the rear of the counter shaft. Um, Figured I changed the other two, so I might as well put that one as well. Um, the 1308 SL I showed you guys the other day um, that they are a shielded bearing, and the point of the shielded bearing, um, the shield goes towards the oil bath, and and on whatever orientation they are. Uh, whatever position they're in, make sure the shield goes towards the oil bath because what the shield is for is just to keep debris in the oil bath out of the bearing because um, the two things that destroy roller bearings like this are number one, debris, and number two, lack of lubrication. Uh, now these shields do let lubrication through, um, but they will not let uh, debris in. 
that is uh, that's the deal with the shielded bearing. Now, when you're putting this back together, uh, generally this is not an issue. See, I've already got it. Well, kind of started in the bore there. A brass drift and a hammer is all it takes to get it on there. Or, or you can put your I do that before. Oh, it's been too damn long since I've done this shit. Okay, remember, just like the front, your rear bearing support uh, also has oil drain grooves. Now, the thing about this one is that you can reverse it 180 degrees and you'll still have an oil drain groove. Um, but if you look at the case here, there is. Um, an oil feed and an oil drain. I get. I mean, I don't think it's actually going to get fed anything from that, but maybe. So, once again, make sure that you don't clog them up with silicone, um, and don't try to put it like 90 degrees out. You, you've got two ways you can do it right. So if you fuck it up, then you you probably deserve it. Um, uh. I think I'm going to end up just taking a, my brass drift over there and my hammer and tapping this down into place. So it wasn't that hard to pull off with the puller. Where is my brass drift? I kind of cleaned up some stuff. So it looks like, well, I mean, it still looks like a gigantic pig stock. I've got shit everywhere, but um, what the hell? Every time I need something. I guess I'm going to lift it somewhere else. Let's see if we can find it. I'm going to take you out of your holder here. I'm actually kind of liking this double clamp system for... Oh, wait a minute. Ah! Bastard. And I would be doing some paint work to the truck today, but it's raining. Again. So, uh, let's see if I can clamp you back in here. Now, uh, good idea to make sure that there's no sand or anything stuck to your hammer and your drift. Because uh, a grain of sand and a brand new roller bearing will destroy it. There we go. They are seated, and the snap ring should be against the case. You look inside, we've got just probably, I don't know. I know there's supposed to be some funny, but I don't remember how much. Oh, well, maybe not. All right. So you remember there's a spacer, a collar that goes here. And I'll show you how that works without the retainer on it. Just so you understand the concept, um, you know, not that, not that any of you are dense or anything, but I, I need to explain this for even the most beginner of beginners to understand. So we'll put the collar on there. Collar rests against the inner race of the bearing. Then I cannot stand that my shot gets full of, I mean, I swept this whole bay out entirely, completely free of sand, and now there's sand everywhere. Never sandblast a vehicle in your driveway, or around your shop, or anywhere that's full of sand. This shit gets everywhere. So we put the yoke on. Now, you'll see the, the yoke sits against your spacer. Now, when you put your nut on, uh, I need to make sure this is in frame again. Yep, cool. When you put your nut on and you tighten it down, what it does is it pulls the shaft through the bearing um, and tightens all of this up. Because, I mean, 
I'm not sure how to explain this, but you should be able to see what I'm talking about. It acts like a puller. So you got the shaft going through it, and the nut is going to pull the shaft um, up through the bearing because the spacer and the yoke itself are sitting against the inner race of the bearing. So that takes out any inflate you're not supposed to have. This should be pretty tight. I don't know. Uh, I want to say it's like 100 foot pounds. It might be 150 foot pounds, but um, as long as you've got it, as long as you've got it, uh, you know, German spec, good and tight, and use a cotter pin, uh, you don't have to put Loctite on it. And I, I actually would advise against that uh, because they're fine threads. It is kind of difficult to get the thing threaded sometimes, and you don't want to accidentally cross thread it because then you destroy the vein shaft. Uh, so that's the way that works without the bearing retainer. It's kind of like a see-through uh, visual AD, but rather. Now, um, I am waiting on my last bearing. It should be in Thursday or Friday. And that's, I mean, that's it. Everything else is ready to go. Once I put this uh, bearing retainer back on, all I'm waiting for is that bearing. And it goes on the same way. Put it on there, tap it down on there with a brass drift, and uh, put the nut on, tighten it up. Put a cotter pin in it. Now, uh, the cotter pin that was on the counter shaft here, it broke. So, it was a hardened cotter pin. And I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it has that, uh, that golden zinc or um, not zinc, zinc is silver. Cadmium plating on it, like grade eight hardware. I don't know if they are hardened, but I notice they do break a lot easier than the silver ones, so it, I suspect they're at least a little harder. And uh, you can't reuse them as much. I think I reused that, or did I? I may have reused that, I may not have when I put the overdrive kit in. Um, I do have some others, but I don't know if they're the same size. Yeah, okay, so I did replace it. I couldn't remember if I had or not, which means I probably replaced the other one too. I'd try not to be too cheap, especially, at, you know, on critical stuff. Um, yeah, that's the same. So I did replace it. Good. Is it bad that I can't trust myself? All right, so enough rambling and shit. Um, you understand what's going on here. Uh, you know, of course, clean your surfaces here, new gaskets. If you haven't torn the gaskets, you can reuse them. Um, you know, if pieces of them haven't come off and delaminated and, and such. Uh, I use copper gasket coat, you can see that's still on there. And I, I don't get any leaks, so. And you don't want to add any clearance. You don't want to use silicone on this shit for the last time. No silicone, okay? Very important that you realize that. Even if it's gear oil specific silicone, no silicone. Gaskets and gasket tack or copper coat. Or the military originally used uh, a shellac or shellac, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, stuff that gets hard as glass and chips off. And that works too, um, but when the case flexes, it tends to crack and then you get seeps. Copper coat doesn't do that. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps you out a lot. I'm going to post this here in the next day or two, and uh, there should be another one or two before that that I'm going to post up. This, I've been doing this kind of in stages when it's not raining and uh, as parts come in. So, or as I find other parts like that. Took me a while to find my gasket sets. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you would, please. Throw something down there in the comments, and uh, we'll talk to you later.